Hi everyone, welcome back to the AstroDude channel. My name is Mitch, and today I'm going to cover plate solving and image scale and the importance of it. So what's been happening is people have been getting me emails and uh, they've been asking me questions like, why can't my plate solving work in SGP? And there's a couple of reasons, a couple of things you have to keep in mind. And the biggest one is your image scale. And that's why we have so many failures in plate solving. So this video is not going to be about um, covering all the, the details in SGP. That's a really long video and there's quite a few steps, but we need to cover a few things just to get plate solving working. So, and I'll try to keep it simple and to the point. So the first thing you're going to need to know is your telescope's focal length. And I'm going to use these examples and you can use um, these ideas to get yours going, just substitute the numbers. So for my Astrotech 72 millimeter refractor, I have a focal length of 430 millimeters. The pixels of my Hypercam Altair Astro is 2.4 microns. I wrote that down here. And the chip is 5440 by 3648, that's the array. So let's keep that nearby because we're going to need this in order to do the plate solving properly. So I'm just gonna reminimize this and the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your equipment profile manager. It is critically important to have this filled out first before you do anything else. Otherwise, there's going to be problems later if you just use the sequencer and uh, the other uh, control uh, window. So as you can see here, I've entered AT72ED and now we're going to go through uh, each each of the, the settings as simple as possible. So under the camera, because this is a profile for my ref for the telescope has to have a camera, of course. So I have the Altair ASCOM driver. And because my camera, I put straight up in the telescope, when I turn, when I turn to a target in the east, it ends up most of the time, the, the telescope will be 90 degrees uh, with the camera in it, <clears throat> in terms of the chip orientation. Now this part's this is the tricky part, the image scale, but I'm gonna do something in a minute so we can fill this in without having to guess or go online. Uh, here I'm just gonna add one electron per ADU, and we just found out that, well, if we look at it again, the chip size is 5440 by 3648. So make sure you enter this, 5440, and use, of course, your own CCD camera, 3648. Okay, and if you want, you can check high-speed download. Okay, now I hit save many times along the way, so I don't want to lose this. So I'm just going to hit save and see profile saved successfully. But just for camera, there are no filter wheel. I didn't put one on. I have one, not installed. Focuser, I have one. I don't put that in. Let's just concentrate on the camera and the telescope for today. We'll use the uh, AVX, Lustron Telescope Driver. And here, the focal length will be 430 millimeters. And I don't have to worry about mount settling time. Don't worry about parking or stopping or meridian flip. And that's not important for today. Again, save that. Go to Plate Solver. You're going to have to have installed Plate Solver 2. I don't go into this today, but I'll show you the, the uh, path that Windows has to those programs, and I'll talk a little bit about it. So make sure you use Plate Solver 2, Max Region, Bin 2x2. Two two. Um, you can use 1x1 one one for Plate Solving. Uh, two by two just makes a smaller image. The image go, comes to the four faster, and I like to use ten seconds. In other words, take the exposure. For example, I got uh, M45 here. The Pleiades in the background. So take a take a ten second exposure right here. Then two by two, or you can use one by one. Now attempt to center the plate solve, the star field, your target, six times. Um, most of the time, it'll work in two or three, even sometimes two. Rarely one because the camera and the telescope never rarely end up dead centered to the target. So six times error until error until error is less than fifty pixels. For you guys that are starting out, make this as high as possible, especially if you're using a sixteen megapixel or twenty million pixels. I would start with hundred and fifty pixels. Now you'll say, well that seems to be far off center, but hundred and fifty pixels out of twenty million still gets the target pretty well dead center. And so once you're happy with that, then drop it down to 125 pixels. And if that's working good, 
and then finally uh, you can go 100 and leave it at 100 and if it and if your camera and your and your telescope and plate solving keeps just keep lowering those numbers until it comes to the point where it's no longer solving and it just keeps timing out 100 is perfect 75 is better and 50 is like probably overkill but it doesn't matter now see here and rotator less than leave that at zero now you can check on use blind solver fall over and in my case because I have and serve installed I'm not gonna go through that today I can choose that or if you have internet connection you're at home you can do astrometry.net it'll upload your image plate solve it bring it back down give you the right settings for your image scale and you're off and running so we can leave, we're going to leave, we're going to leave it astrometry.net for now otherwise it would end up being local astrometry.net but you have to have and serve installed and all this catalogs this is not for today hit OK save that remember it's up here AT 72 ED let me just check if there's any other settings um, let's just go here for a moment that should bring up this now here it's really critical this plate solver 2.29 and, and we'll go uh, we're gonna, this is where I was going to show you the path that window chooses to go down to those catalogs if and not they're installed it's really important that you install them and it's not that difficult maybe I'll make another video on that but for now let's just get the plate solving working and the image scale so under edit parameter see this big button right here I want you guys if you're using small telescopes even um, people have had trouble plate solving using camera lenses from 18 millimeter up to 300 millimeters and it's because the Sigma max star size is too low and the, th the threshold detection Sigma is also too low so for you guys who want to plate solving a little bit quicker at put that at 8 max star and put 12 for detection and I believe by default UCAC 3 is selected and we're gonna go there in a minute these are the two catalogs APM or UCAC 3 and I always leave it on UCAC and I have no problem solving any file or any star field any target as long as these are all filled in properly for the specific telescope and the specific camera some people have more than one camera and some people have three four telescopes enter your longitude 80 minus 82 for me latitude 42 and click OK now the most important part of all or one of the most important go to configure catalog directories okay let's bring this down here now automatic plate match is the APM and it's from Starry Ridge and you can get all this I believe from plane wave so my APM I have two of them I have UCAC 3 and APM my APM catalog that I installed I put it in this one's probably done automatically when you install it. it'll go to Starry Ridge so C program files x86 stands for 32-bit because this is a 64-bit computer Starry Ridge APM status is okay because it knows the catalog is found otherwise you'll get a catalog not found let's go to the directory direct let's go directly to the directory okay let's move over a bit so let's go to program files x86 it always for some reason starts at program files which is 30 64 bit but let's go to x86 scroll down to Starry Ridge it's s you see it here down one and select APM this should have been installed before you start SGP I'm not gonna go okay I'm gonna go cancel but at least I showed you the path that's one number two UCAC 3 this one it's a it's a pretty big file it's probably 900 meg it's got hundreds and hundreds of catalogs so in this one I placed it in C UCAC 3 UCAC 3 PS plate solver so let's go select the directory again just C drive back up close this make sure I'm on C directly right here yes I am all the way down to UCAC 3PS right here down one directory over a bit and UCAC 3 and here you have to be careful that plate solver is either inside that or beside that but I mean later on I'll do a video just just for the directory settings which is some people get frustrated here it's like nothing's working and basically it's always the fact that the catalogs are not in the right position or the files are not chosen properly but in this case it's just going to show you what what's where and why so these have to be status okay status okay and they will turn green if these two big catalogs are there let's close this and let's close this 
Right, so we have, we've selected plate solver two, max region two by two, 10 second exposure. Try, it six, try to run the plate solver six times on the target and try to bring it within 100 pixels. Next, the next one is, of course, you can hit save at this point. Yep. Auto guider. Um, I'm using PHG2. It's small dither. Of course, this has nothing to do with plate solving. Just we're in the profile. We might as well finish it up a bit. So for me, it's every two frames. Uh, settle at half a pixel for about, you know, let me just get rid of this three seconds. Okay. I don't touch anything else. I don't recalibrate. Just let's so we can go through this. All right. Let's 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 get out of here. So save it one last time. Make sure AT72ED is, is up here and not just down here. You're going to say, well, it's not in my list. I had to take, I had to type this in. For example, if I delete this now and I go, I don't know, C8 underscore ASI 1600. Well, now that's going to show up down here. If I hit save, I don't want that because I don't have that. But now you know where to enter it. So back again, select AT72, AstroTech, Refractor, save, profile save. Let's get out of here. Okay. Today we're going to, we're going to, we're going to work on M45. A couple of reasons for that is that when you're plate solving, and let's say you don't have that target, you don't have the target, but at least you have your focal length and your pixel size, which is really, really important. So I'm going to go through the, I'm going to th go through a run quickly, but here's what's important. Whether you've shot this target before, or you've never shot this target before, whatever it may be, you have to start here. And there's a reason for it. If I forget something, I'll try to go over it. But before you even open up your a photo or no photo, exam, for example, there may be none here. I don't want to close it because I'll be using this in a moment and I had to go get it on the terabyte. So start like this. File, open sequence with profile. Now, I don't have a personal profile. In other words, I didn't enter my name, the home, the observatory. I didn't put that in. You can, and if you want to, it'd be under use. These two things have to be filled out. Um, if you want, I'll just do it real quickly. You see there's nothing here, or maybe it did. I might have done it before. So let's select Mitch. So Astro Dude Chatham, 165, 42, 82, and I'm five degrees off the horizon for me to clear the trees in part way. So, okay. So remember, if you want, and you actually have to do this, please fill in your user profile manager. Sometimes you can auto-populate and you have a connection. It'll actually grab all this, perhaps based on where you are. If not, do like I did, enter it manually, save, Okay, that's done. Both now, both the equipment profile, which is right here, AT72, is all filled in. Camera, telescope, plate solver, guider. Save. Okay, out we go. Now let's start. First thing is open a new sequence with profile. Everybody fails to do this. Now, it says the data has changed because I had another window open. Always, I always say no here. Why? Because I actually want to start a new sequence. So I don't really care about that. So this is the window I'm interested in. Like you can see, I have a couple of telescope. I have their 115, the RC6, the Brezer, and AT72. And this is the one we're working on. Today, we're going to shoot M45, the Pleiades, but we're going to use the refractor. So select your telescope based on the profile you created. All right, let's say OK. So here it is. Um, and as you can see, because we created that profile, look how things are nice. At the top, it says AT72ED, and the person is, or the profile of the person, or the user, or the observatory is Mitch. So I know that I'm in the right profile for my gear, which is my Altair, my Celestron telescope, no focuser, autofocuser, no filter wheel, just plain Jane, no problem. That's the first thing I want to do. Now from here, is where the people say, well, I want to plate solve this and I want to go, and that's fine. So now we're going to use, because this video is actually about the plate solver, but primarily to get to that, we're going to be used, and you can close that window by hitting the two arrows here. Watch, arrow up, arrow down. A lot of people don't know that. They do this instead. They put it over to the side, okay, or they put it down here, and that's fine, but why? Put it here, hit the arrow. Number two, go to the box right beside it, which is the control panel. Make sure that those settings match the same as these settings right here. Okay, so let's close it. Camera, not connected. Of course not, I'm not connected. But the scale, see here your scale, image scale, that's where this is going to be filled in. Yes, I am 5440 on the pixels. I'm 3648. One electron per ADU is my readout noise, which is super low. 
I'm at 90 degrees when I, the telescope slews to the Pleiades. But now here's the key. See this tiny, tiny, tiny little box with a little arrow pointing upwards, which means I don't know what slash pixels. Let's click on that. There is where people run into problems. Some people don't even know that box is there. So under scale, image scale, binning one by one, and we have we may have to change that other binning in a minute that I showed you earlier because I said two by two for plate solving. If you're plate solving one by one, you should set scale one by one. So we're gonna leave it one by one. I'll walk you through what I might have done for a mistake. So the microns, well, let's have a look. What does it say? 2.4, 2.4 microns. Let's put it in, 2.40. What is the focal length of my telescope? Let's have a look. It's 430 millimeter on the AstroTech, 430. Now calculate this. People forget here. It's it's fine if you just and hit OK. Nothing's going to happen. But SGP can calculate your image scale if you hit the calculate button. And my image scale is 1.15. Yes, it's 151, but I think it only accepts sometimes two digits, not three. It doesn't matter. 1.15. Okay. There. This is no longer empty. Now keep this number in mind for a moment. Let's go back to tools, equipment profile select your refractor go here and here's why see down here where it says image scale I'm not sure what it is well we have to make sure what it is 1.151 and hit save perfect now let's go back to plate solver see here it was binning two by two leave that at one by one 10 seconds six times at 100 pixels accuracy save Okay, now next time that you watch this video a few times, you'll do it forward. We just did it backwards. I went, I went back a bit because I made um, not a mistake, but I, I didn't know if I was going to bin two by two, one by one. Let's leave everything one by one when it comes to plate solving. So it is as is where is. You might say, well, hold on a second. My target's going to be shooting. I'm going to be shooting. I'm going to binning all night two by two. Doesn't matter. You can still plate solve one by one and get the right. Um, image scale. That's really important to keep everything one by one for same, for plate solving. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Telescope. It's not connected, but it was chosen over here. We know it's going to be the Celestron AVX. Let's close that. Plate solving. Plate solver number two, or plate solver two from plane wave. Max regions. Binning. I'm going to put this back to one by one. Ten seconds. Auto guiders, PhD2. Now about about this, when you hit settings here, if you didn't make a profile in PhD2, then you're gonna get this blank. I don't have PhD2 installed on this computer. This computer's not for being outside, but I'll give it the path anyways. And again, this has nothing to do with plate solving, but we're filling in the blanks here. No, oh, that's great. I can't reach the top of this. Okay, any hoot um, computer, and we're gonna go to C drive. And I think it's for PhD, it might be x86. Um, if not, then it's going to be just program files. Let's have a look. PhD2. Um, mm -mm -mm, Pix Insight. Uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Elemental P. Okay, so. I don't think I've installed PhD2 here. This is just my computer to make videos. So this is not, um, at least I don't see, oh yeah, here it is, right here, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. So PhD2 guiding, and just say okay, there it is. Now, there's probably not a profile here, and if there would be a profile, it would actually show up here as whatever your guider CCD is. If it's QHY, it'll show up here. If it's a GP cam, it'll show up here, and if it's a ZW120MC, that will show up automatically. But because there's no profile built in, from this program here, PhD, it doesn't show up. We don't care about it. All right. At least I don't think there's a profile. Let me go have a quick look. Oh, there's one. All right. So I didn't save that. If I had to save that properly, it would be in that list. Okay. Let's just minimize that. That's in the way. All right. Okay. Let's con let's concentrate on uh, image scale and plate solving. So we're good here. Let's close a little window. By the way, that's right beside this called control panel. Off, on, and sequence. On, off. Okay, we can leave this closed for now. Now, the moment of truth. Let's go and tools, framing and mosaic wizard, type in, and again, I'm not going to go through all these. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can acquire an image. 
you can get it from browsing uh, oh, if you go browse would be a whole list here you can f select an image but here I want I want to send um, I want to fetch the target from the server online I never use the, the one from um, there's other things like DSO browser Astrobin why complicate life so I'm gonna go for M45 I want three degrees because M45 is fairly large and my image scale here here because I chose start and then new sequence with profile it populated this number two to find the camera data desired frame overlap area well this sometimes ends up with nothing in there and I'm gonna remove it now that now we won't be able to plate solve because SGP won't know the size of the camera and telescope so I wanted to show you manually enter the scale produced by your camera so there's that little box again right beside the dot dot slash pixels let's click on this what is the size of your pixels 2.4 microns if it's an ASI 1600 I believe it's 3.75 what's the focal length of the telescope and here's another thing that people have been accidentally doing if your telescope's 805 millimeter and you put in a 0.79 reducer or 0.8 or 0 0.7, 0 0.67, or 0.6, this is obviously not going to be the focal length. It'll be reduced. And if you want, and I could do this now, it's going to take a little bit longer, because this is sometimes for absolute beginners. Let me just see if I can find my calculator. And I'm going to run through the, the, the reason for this. Um, before I fill this out, fill this in. Let's go back here. For example, you still have the same camera, 2.4 microns, but let's say I change telescopes and I'm at 805 millimeters on a different refractor the bigger one the 115 so what you want to do is you want to multiply that times my reducer which is 0.79 that equals 635 millimeters not 805 that will kill your image scale and plate solving will fail unless you've taken that reducer flattener into consideration now of course the next step is if you want to go further, but it doesn't affect anything, it might confuse things. You can still divide this by the opening, which is 115, and I get f5.5, but we don't care. We want the 650. Again, don't need this. My little AstroTech is 430. I'm going to punch in 430. And if I calculate this, it should come out to 1.15. And it is 1.15. Remember, calculate, then hit OK. And this here, yeah, it should have worked. Okay, let's do it again. Wow, maybe I didn't hit something. 240, 430, calculate, unless there's a bug here. Okay. Okay, that's supposed to populate. Mm, I'm going to put it in manually. At least I know what it is. I don't know why that happened. That should not have happened. Um, let's try one more, a third time. If not, I don't know what's going on with this. So 2.40 is the pixel size. The focal length is 430. Calculate 1.5, okay. No, nope. because I put it in, it's already there. Anyways, keep an eye on this. I'm not sure what's going on here. This, as soon as you say okay, this this window fills in. Now we have the proper image scale. We have the size of our chip array. We don't care about the overlapping unless you're doing a mosaic and we're not. The other thing I like to do here, this rotate selection, we're not gonna rotate anything, but I'm just gonna say that it's 90 degrees. Okay, I'm just gonna type in 90 degrees because in a moment, I'm gonna ask it to go fetch M45. Are we ready? Okay, let's go fetch that first. Okay, that was really fast. Let's move this window down out of the way a bit. Go to your histogram, the bottom black button, and make uh, whatever target here, make it a little bit darker so you can see the stars. All right, so here we go. Okay, so we have M45, not the best picture, I've seen it better. And now we're going to create, we can't click on create until we drag the mouse across the field here. Now, you can start smaller if you want. It doesn't matter because the red square, well, um, let's do it right now. I'm just going to make it nice and about here. Okay. If you get this four windows, come down here to camera tiles, go one by one, grab the one and put it over top of the pleaties. There you go. Now, that image scale was based on 1.15 and the 5440 by 3648. Okay, so wherever you place this, if I put it up here, I'm going to miss half of the nebula. And if I put it down here, common sense says I'll miss the top of the nebula. So orient this where you want. Now, some people say, well, it's kind of awkward and my chip's not pointing that way. True. So in that case, bring this back to zero. 
and let me move the window there you go now it's much better put it dead center it doesn't matter what the orientation is because the plate solver doesn't look at the target it looks at the stars in any orientation and solves it and gives you the target so that's it this um, we can zoom in a bit if you want to zoom in a bit there so place it where you want it not too high not too low dead center uh, make sure all the stars are in so that's that's how we did it how did I do it by dragging the mouse across letting it go and the red circle yeah that's a red circle yay welcome to Canada the red square is the size of the chip 5440 by 3648 and to show that let's say I was using uh, my old s big 2000 well the pixel will be 1600 by 1200 So look at the difference. This is about as much as I could get on my S Big 2000 compared to my new Hypercam Altair Astro uh, 183 IMX. So let's put it back to 5440. 5440. It's good to do this to practice 3648. Hit enter and now grab the one. Make sure you center it exactly where you want the target to be and hit create sequence. Now let's bring this window over. Here we go again. Once you have a target name M45 or Pleiades, I'm not going to talk about appending. Appending adds it to a second, third, or fourth window or target that you have here. I can't click it because this is Windows open. So always, always, always on a single target, on a single night, click replace targets in sequence. Appending, we can talk about that later. Just means adding two or three or four targets. Replace do not select auto rotate and validate rotation on mosaic start why because you probably don't own an auto rotator and if you do then sure click it and we're not going to do a mosaic so we're not going to rotate for the mosaic leave this unchecked this video was made because a, um, a subscriber of mine i suppose asked me he's having all kinds of problems with rotating errors and auto rotators and validations i go i'll make the video uh, to help some people who are having trouble with plate solving and this is one of them so don't check auto rotate and there's another spot we can check in a moment you want a precise centering with plate solving so make sure that's checked slew to target then center based on all these settings for plate solving and associate this image this working image with the sequence you're about to do why because this is what's going to use to put your telescope and your camera on that target and you'll get exactly this frame and you can't it can't it can't be larger or smaller because you told it what size the telescope was going to be in the image scale 430 by 2 by 4 microns pixel size say okay you can read all this I've read it a hundred times I just say uh, simply check auto rotate and validate I don't and I don't want to and I don't want to touch the auto rotator and I don't want to do some mosaic so I just say yes on this every time in other words just accept what I've given it and you should get success created one new target all right notice that the other window the frame of focuser it auto disappears now we just made we just made we just created a sequence based on this target with this chip and this telescope my telescope my camera and this is what I expect to see if I take one frame all right the orientation might be different because the camera can be pointing to 90 degrees or it can be straight up or upside down most people put their cameras right side in they put it you know right side up and the camera turns as the telescope turns it doesn't matter this is what you're going to get in your telescope even if it's straight up for example if I there if I push it this way okay I do this you see here how now the Pleiades is pointing upwards it's not a problem it's still gonna plate solve perfectly every single time it has for me should for you and of course here we don't have to worry about the, my run which is going to be lights and you know it's going to be uh, i don't know two minutes it's going to be bending one by one i'm going to do 120 of them that's not important it's not what this video is about but here's another thing you must be careful before you start your sequence sure of course this has to be filled in or you won't be able to run the sequence and of course you're going to have to go to browse go to sgp wherever your folder is on the desktop um and i believe mine i'm not even sure if i have one on the desktop i think i do so I'm going to check SVP. I'm going to make a new folder, M45. And say, okay, so this is populated. 
Oh, look at that. It chooses you folded. Guess that was really smart. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yes, because I was in the wrong folder. All right. I wanted to go to the desktop. Now I'm on the desktop. So again, new folder, M45. Oh, I think I have a problem here with my mouse. Rename, M45. Hmm. Here we go. So select M45, say OK. Now the directory is really important or this won't start. In fact, if a lot of things are not set, this run sequence won't start. Now, I can't run the sequence because I have nothing set up and then it's in the middle of the daytime. But right up to this point, if you connect your camera and you connect your, your mount and you run the sequence and PHD2 is running in the background, it's already collecting you know, some frames, you should be able to send this now. Here's the last thing that you always have to check. See here this little gear beside M45 target? You need to click on this. The name is M45 the Pleiades, but you have to select slew 2 when target starts, center on when target starts, there's your plate solver, and do not check rotate camera to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or this will cause a problem. It'll say there's no rotator, there's no camera, you're not making a mosaic. This is going to fail. No rotating camera. There's no need. We're not ro you're not using a rotator. This is just a plain Jane setup with a CCD and a telescope and a, and a mount. And voila. So if you hit OK here, now you'll slew 2 and you'll center on. And I'll say OK. Now, how do we test this? How do we know this is actually going to work? Well, here's what we can do. Here's what we can simulate, but in real time. I'm going to close this, this window. Now, if see how it says Untitled Star? At this point, if you follow all these steps and you're ready to go, almost ready to go, this, of course, is the Hypercam, you'll want to go File, C, Save, Save Sequence As. It's M45. It's already, it already renamed it for you. And you may want to go to your folder, which I put mine on the desktop. Double click. M45, it might even already be in the list. I'm just going to go down real quick. I don't see it, so I should be okay. So this is the sequence, and it's now saved. Now, let's close this for a moment. Go to my real M45. And this was taken with that telescope, with that camera, with that image scale. This was taken from the server. Well, it's right here. I sent my telescope this here. I went start sequence. It slewed over to M45. Took a picture for 10 seconds, one by one. Laid it up against the plate solver. Solved it. Moved it two or three times to center it. And then ended up right like this. Identical to what I was hoping for. Now, keep in mind, the orientation was a bit off. As you can see, the telescope's higher here and lower here. But the plate solving was absolutely perfect now how can we prove that well this is an actual frame of the actual uh, 40 m45 that I did um, two weeks ago and so we can actually go plate solve this target with what using the information that we've already entered in it's m45 the angle is zero but it could be 90 degrees we could try it and what was our image scale 1.151 now solve this now it's just as if we're outside and the camera now just took a picture of 10 seconds. It's going to attempt to plate solve this and see if it can match it. Okay, well, that was done in five seconds. Successfully solved the current frame. It's at 3 hours and 46 minutes, 24 degrees and 07, and the scale is 1.15. Now, listen, look at what you can do here if you land it on this manually and you could right click and plate solve it. You could say, use these results of the plate solver for the reference target in here. Let's do it. So use these. Say OK. Open this. Go here. And these numbers, 336 and 2407, Ari and Deck, have just been added from your plate solving. You don't have to do this. I did it manually. And it worked perfectly. And from here, of course, it would start by fire up at PSG2 if you're calibrated. It would start the guiding, and you'd be on your first frame of two minutes for 120 times. So that's, that's, that is the absolute basics of Sequence Generator Pro for getting the plate solver to work every single time. Now, I didn't do the background layout 
on this video only what was already installed what the catalogs the proper thresholds the image scale the size of your chip your telescope's focal length including the focal reducer and this is the result you get and for me I've never had any failures and when I did and I have some but I'm referring to is I made a mistake I forgot that up here in my image profile that chose AT472 that this image scale was wrong I changed telescope and didn't realize I hadn't had not made the changes for my image scale including the pixel size and saved it another thing is you check is that control panel over to again look quick click on the plate solver six times a hundred pixels see if it fails sometimes it's the until error is less than 100 pixels keep trying sometimes it tries forever because there's this is too low some people have this at 25 or 10 start at a high number it won't fail one by one 10 seconds and the camera again very important i'm at 90 degrees angle when it flips to on its side when it goes to the east southeast my image scale 115 or 1.151 and my pixels 5440 by 3648 my readout doesn't sound important but it's one electron and i use a high speed download at usb 3.0 that's it so camera telescope plate solver auto guider this video is not about that it was just some people could not plate solve they didn't know why they couldn't plate solve and a lot 90 percent of the time if you go to tools frame and focus and you have to make sure your camera's pixels are perfect. Make sure your image scale is perfect. Here, I'm giving you another example. Let's just leave that right there. Hopefully, this will work. So there's a bug here in my in my software. This is not the latest SGP. Let's go 2.4 micron, but this time I'm going to change it to my VRC6, which I know for a fact is 903 millimeters. Now I'm going to calculate it. Ah, oh, 054. Not the same. If I click OK. The scale here should change in this little window here where my cursor is and this box should shrink ready here we go okay ah <laughs> i guess you can't do that with a target that's already been pre-made i'd have to go look at this again m45 let's go research it for three degrees this time i'll only get two degrees That sometimes takes up to a minute. Okay, well, that wasn't too, too bad. I'm gonna reduce it, make it a little bit darker. I'm gonna rotate it. Uh, can I rotate this? That won't let me. Okay, so here's, remember what I said when you end up with two panels? Go down to your camera tiles and make sure it's one by one. Now, the RC6 is 903 millimeters or 905. I got a scale of 054, and this is only the amount of stars I can get in the Pleiades, it's those three or these three or those two okay I'm gonna go click on here again I'm gonna change this again 240 or 2.40 micron my focal length is 430 for my small refractor recalculate 1.151 I'm gonna hit OK again see what it just did it just adjusted automatically back to where we were all right so what if we had a C8 and we're using 3.75 ISI oh. ASI 1600 or ZW3, I'm, I think the ZW1600 Protect Cool is 3.75 microns. And let's see your telescope is a C8, but you got you have um, the Celestron 0.63 focal reducer in there. So 2000 millimeters is the C8, and that would bring you down to 1260, roughly. So calculate the image scale, 0.614, okay? So let's hit it OK and see if that red square changes for a C8 at F6. There it is. You can play with this all day. Well, at least with the type of telescope and the type of camera you have. One last time. Pixel size, focal length, calculate, OK. And if you want to take it even further and you have a lens, then 2.4 micron is my camera but my lens is just a 300 millimeter camera uh, lens from Canon so it's a 300 f 4.5 let's calculate the scale 1.650 say okay that should go wide so this is how much let's move this over this is how much of the of the Pleiades I can get inside my 300 millimeter f 4.5 Canon lens mounted to my CCD or 
CMOS camera at a pixel scale of 1.650. That's it. I'll close this. I'm not even going to bother with that. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes, I do. We're back to where we started. And this is the image scale. Notice these two are identical. Now I'm going to turn it sideways a bit here so you, can, you guys can see. Okay, so we have the two two stars at the top and the three are on the bottom. Let me go see here for a second. Hopefully I didn't change that. I believe you have to rotate that to make it look the same as this one here. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Everything is perfect. So there it is. That ends this, today's video. Sorry, I haven't done a video in a long time. I haven't been feeling well, but see if we can get back to it slow and steady. I have a couple of others that I've had in mind for intermediate, and that was, this is going to be a big video, probably an hour long. It's going to be, um, or an hour and a half. It's um, narrow band IC 1848, which was part of the heart nebula, I believe, or the soul, sorry, it's a soul nebula. Um, and that was an SHO going from a uh, Hubble palette, greenish yellow, to a gold teal. Anyways, no promises on that, but I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, got a couple of other things I also want to work on. But thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and share it. This video was made specifically for why can't I plate solve uh, my images with my telescope, my camera, and my mount even though it looks like I put in everything properly and the rotation derotation or rotator derotator um, when it's not included remember to uncheck the, all those things that sequence should go to the target take a picture 10 seconds bin one by one plate solve it and keep moving the scope one two three times until it's dead center and you'll see this here it's going to end up right where you selected it here these two have to match 99% they will if they don't now you know why. Image scale, focal length, hopefully, of course, everything else has to work. For example, your mount has to be connected. It has to have a pretty good, very good polar alignment. And don't forget your 2x4. What's a 2x4? Well, you, the, don't confuse polar alignment with star alignment. Polar alignment means the telescope is now directly on the celestial pole, not far from Polaris. But star alignment means you've chosen one, two, three, or four stars to create a model of the sky. So then when you first slew to M45, you're even close. And some people say, I don't have to do any of that. Just default mount, power up the mount. Just say go to. And if you need it, it's two degrees out, it'll plate solve. And just why do that? Whatever telescope you have, whatever camera you have, whatever mount you have, do your polar alignment. I use sharp cap. I'm going to do a video on that. Hopefully tonight. And then do a one star or a two star or three or four star alignment so you can model the sky and the telescope knows exactly where it is when it leaves the home position and salutes to your galaxy, nebula, or cluster. And that is really, to me, important. I know a lot of people don't. They skip over it and just expect the software to plate solve and, and center the scope. And it does. But why add? extra work when there's when there's none and I don't think a uh, one or two star alignment is a big 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 deal you can choose any bright star if it's summer it's Vega and Deneb and if it's winter you can go with um, Capella and something near you know Cassiopeia or any bright brighter star any Beetlejuice for that matter if you're pointing towards Orion or anything in, in Gemini or something in the please any star that's two stars or three stars that are in the east and then the west I don't have a west side, so I can only do a two-star alignment in the east. And once those two stars have been chosen and the mount recalibrates, it now knows where all the stars are. So the go-to, and this is all about go-to, at least this particular discussion, will work for you too. Thank you. That's all. I'm done. Have a good time. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully uh, you have clear skies and have a great time. So... Hopefully this was helpful for a few people who were asking about this video for plate solving. It wasn't, it was very condensed. Um, I don't know if I could have added anything, but please comment below if it was helpful. And I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you for watching.